Hello again, brothers and sisters in Christ. I am back for the last video tonight. This is the one about food safety and recall recalls. I have three, uh, uh, what do you call them, files opened up here to go, go straight to them. All right, I'm going to start with the one from Food Safety News. And this, it reminds me of what started happening around Halloween when the children's mothers had to start going through their candy because people were putting razor blades in apples. And people started to be warned not to give anything that isn't store-bought and wrapped. You know, not give apples and homemade cookies. I thought, that is so sad. This was back when I believed in Halloween. You know, dressing your kids up and letting them go out. <sighs> How stupid. Any Christian ought, ought to be taught by their pastor to not allow Halloween. It, but anyway, let, this is not about Halloween. But you're not supposed to. You should not celebrate Halloween in a traditional way of dressing up, going out, trick-or-treating, and, um, you know, putting things around your house, pumpkins with cut-out, scary faces. Uh, you know, I don't think there's anything wrong with sitting out pumpkins not carved because I don't think it's wrong to acknowledge harvest time. Some people say it is because the pagans did. Well, you know, Satan had the pagans doing a whole lot of things that he knew later that Christians would end up doing. And then it would cause problems with, with spirits of religiosity. But anyway, this, let me go on to this article by Food Safety News. Breaking news for everyone's consumption. And it's sponsored by Marler Clark. And, okay. Chain, ex uh, photo, okay, that's a photo. I'll use that photo as my custom thumbnail. It's just showing a, a thing of pizza dough already rolled out and ready to put stuff on. A chain expands pizza dough recall involving razor blade tampering. Can you believe that? Hannaford Supermarkets has expanded a pizza dough recall to include all Portland pie products while doubling down on warnings to consumers about, quote, malicious tampering, unquote, involving metal objects. Quote, Hannaford has removed all Portland pie products from all store shelves and has paused replenishment of the products indefinitely, unquote. Well, until they find the sinister person, must have been an employee, I would think. According to the October 11th expanded recall notice posted on the supermarket chain's website, as of October 19th, the Food and Drug Administration had not posted the company's recall notice. The recall has been published by news media. The FDA's standing policy is to post company recall notices after they have been published elsewhere. No injuries had been reported as of 
Hannaford's posting of the expanded recall. So apparently there was some before that. Excuse me. Let me, um, I need a drink. All right. Customers who purchased Portland Pie Pizza Dough and Portland Pie Cheese sold in the deli at any Hannaford store between August the 1st and August 11th. August the 1st? and October 11 should not consume the products and may return it to the store for a full refund according to the recall notice. I hope if you bought it way back in August you put it in the freezer for later. At any rate, if you bought any of the, bought anything at the Hannaford did I say that right? Hannaford store Okay, customers are urged to also check storage areas, including freezers, for product that may have been purchased and frozen during this time frame. Hey, I just said that. According to the Press Herald in South Portland, uh, M.E., that's Maine, isn't it? Hannaford failed to report the discovery of the razor blades within the 24-hour period as required by law. The chain's representatives told the newspaper technical difficulties were to blame. Technical difficulties? Of what kind? I wonder how many people were actually injured with this. Apparently, a customer complaint about razor blades led to the investigation, which is being handled by local authorities. Investigators determined the Portland Pie branded products were supplied by, quote, It'll Be Pizza, unquote, based in Scarborough, Maine. Some say, or it's M.E., I'm pretty sure that's Maine. I could be wrong. There's a lot of states that start with M. Some say the problem is definitely post-production. So they were inserted after they were actually made and put in a box. Hmm. Bill Marler, a Seattle food safety attorney, told the Press Herald that authorities are right to have focused on tampering at the retail level. That would be, I guess, they get them to the store, put them in the deli, and someone at a deli has done this. How mean is that? How evil? Razor blades don't just fall from the sky. If it was a bolt or screw, a brush, bristle, they could have come off during the manufacturing process, Marler told the newspaper. But razor blades? Anybody in the food business who gave it any thought would suspect to be deliberate pretty quickly. I should say so. All right, that's the end. Bill Marler, the tags, Bill Marler, food tampering and pizza. All right. So that's the end of that one. If you want to look it up, type in food, and you can't see the link, type in foodsafetynews.com and then just enter the title, Chain Expands Pizza Dough Recall Involving Razor Blade Tampering. On to the next one. And this is pretty bad. Uh, <clears throat> apparently, this has been an ongoing problem. The title, and well, we're in end times headlines. That's see the link she sent me was to 
Paul Begley. And of course, he has to do his, are you serious? And, and then he says something about flesh-eating bacteria. You all need your health, people. And goes into selling his health food products. I'm like, no, not sharing it. I'm sorry. I just, you know, if you like Paul Bagley, that's fine. That's on. That's up to you. I used to watch him myself, but um, I just did my own research and looked up flesh-eating bacteria in the Carolinas, and there were several new sources, and I picked this one. So it's end time headlines. You can type that in head time headlines dot org and then type into the search bar flesh eating bacteria lurking in the ocean is killing people in the Carolinas. Now why just the Carolinas? This was put out October 21st, 2020. Oh, Lord, please strengthen my voice. I feel like it's going weak. <clears throat> All right. The State. I don't know if that's a publication or if the state put this out. They're showing on the ocean, like on the beach, there's a sign advisory and two red flags so people will go read it as Billy Bailey picked through the crabs he caught on Big Bay Creek trying to determine which to keep and which to throw back one of them clamped down on his hand causing him to shake his fingers hmm This, oh, there was an advertisement there, I guess, because this goes on to tell the story. The small cut that opened from the claw's pinch reminded Bailey to be more careful the next time he went crabbing. Then he chuckled and forgot about it, sitting back in the boat while his fishing buddy maneuvered the craft to the dock that day in early October 2017. Hours later, Bailey was shivering and sick, buried under a pile of blankets that couldn't keep him warm, say friends who were with him. By dawn the next day, Bailey's stomach was upset and he couldn't walk. His worried friends rushed him to the doctor. I would have rushed him to the hospital, wouldn't you? Well, anyway, maybe a doctor was closer. On October 13, 2017, Bailey died in the hospital, the victim of a microbe so dangerous it can inflict horrific pain trigger ghastly skin infections and kill in a matter of days. Now that was three years ago. This month. It's called Vibrio, a bacteria that research shows is sickening more people and being found more often in rivers, creeks, and sounds along the Carolina coast. I think a sound, is that not like a, like where the ocean meets the river and there might be a, like a portion cut out where people tend to want to swim. Anyway, I'll move on. You can look that up if you want and put it in the description box. And I'll pin it to the top. Okay. I lost my place. Um, more often in rivers, creeks, and sounds along the Carolina coast. People who get toxic Vibrio infections 
from swimming or handling fish, crabs, and shrimp sometimes. Watch helplessly as toxins eat away at their flesh, turning small sores into gaping wounds. Now that's some dangerous, toxic stuff. That's like acid. The Earth's warming climate, which is, now see that, I don't believe that. But anyway, maybe it is warming, but it's not our fault. We'll put it that way. The Earth's warming climate, which is causing sea levels to rise and storm surges to intensify, is a major reason dangerous strains of Vibrio are an increasing threat to people who swim, fish, and work in coastal waters across the planet, scientists say. Oh, now here it says the state... Oh, when I touch on it, it moves. The state is an American daily newspaper published in Columbia, South Carolina. The newspaper is owned and distributed by the McClatchy Company in the, in the Midlands region of the state. It is, by circulation, the second largest newspaper in South Carolina after the Post and Courier. All right. It says here you can read more. I'd like to read uh, updates. Okay, here, this is October 20. Well, I did turn off, okay, I have to turn off my ad blocker. Refresh. All right. A flesh-eating bacteria lurking in the ocean is killing people in the Carolinas. Again, I say, why just the Carolinas? Um, and then they got flashing pictures of it. Uh, danger beyond the beach. Climate change and its toll on health in the Carolinas. In North and South Carolina, sea level rise is most noticeable in counties along the coast where beaches shrink, dunes disappear, and homes crumble. But the effect of climate change reach well inland, quote, beyond the beach, unquote, is a seven-part series examining the health toll that climate change is already taking on the people who live and work in the Carolinas. The project is a partnership of the News and Observer in Raleigh, North Carolina. The state in Columbia, South Carolina, Columbia Journalism School and the Center for Public Integrity, funding support for Beyond the Beach came from the Pulitzer Center on crisis reporting, Columbia Journalism Investigations, an investigative reporting unit at the Columbia Journalism School also contributed to the project. Anyway, that's getting boring. All right, the point is the beaches where they're eroding, apparently homes are crumbling, is where this flesh-eating bacteria is lurking in the ocean and going up into their rivers. And the areas right at the where the rivers meet the ocean. Okay, so if you can't see the link in the description box, go to thestate.com or www.thestate.com. I don't think you have to put the www in anymore and put in the title. Uh, well, this says news, local, environment, article, and there's a long number. I would type in a flesh-eating bacteria lurking in the ocean because this article is as of 
updated one hour and six minutes ago, October 20th, 2020. Okay, so it's still going on. All right, so now we're going to move on to the third one. I need a drink of water. And you won't believe this. Yeah, you probably will. All right. It's the channel is Psy S. Let me spell it out. S I L I V E. Psy Live. Still live anyway. Dot com. All right, spices and herbs now are being recalled. Okay, the title is spices and comma herbs recalled for possible salmonella contamination. Can you believe it? Spices and herbs. Updated October 21, 10.53 a.m. and posted October 21st. All right. Two companies announced recalls of spices and herbs that may be contaminated with salmonella. And that in quote in a parentheses it says, Hoang... H O A N G Leon, apparently that's a nickname, Nagayan, capital N G U Y E N. That must be his last name, Nagayan, slash the Republican. Okay. Now down here it says. Staten Island, New York. Check your pantry before you use any spices the next time you cook. Can you believe this? How would salmonella get into spices? And they're organic. Okay, the U.S. Federal Drug Administration, or FDA, recently announced recalls from two companies. Red Monkey Foods Incorporated, never heard of them, and Sour Brands, I've heard of them, it's spelled S-A-U-E-R, Brands Incorporated, of herbs and spices that may be contaminated with salmonella. Maybe, they may be. I mean, seriously, you're going to warn people to throw out their spices because they may be uh, infected with salmonella? <laughs> I tell you what. So, okay, Red Monkey Foods Incorporated is voluntarily recalling select organic parsley as part of a recall initiated by high-quality organics after a sample was tested by a customer and was found to be potentially contaminated with salmonella. A portion of the lot recalled by high-quality organics was supplied to Red Monkey Foods Incorporated and subsequently repacked into consumer containers for parsley. That just sounds weird. I get it. They get in a batch of this parsley and they repackage it into ones that have their name and label on it. Okay. And subsequently repacked into consumer containers for parsley. It was also used to manufacture herbs de Provence. Uh, like that sounds like French, because I was going to say that's 
spelled wrong, H-E-R-B-E-S-D-E province, which was then sold in consumer containers. So was it made in France? To date, there have been no consumer complaints or reported cases of salmonella in connection with these products. Yeah, people are probably cooking with them and it kills it. So no, no illnesses reported according to the FDA. The potentially affected products were sold to retailers across the United States. The products recalled have Best Buy dates in March 2023. It's best used by 20, March of 2023. And include... Cost plus world market herbs de Provence. Cost plus world market organic parsley. Great value herbs de Provence. Organic. Great value. Isn't it Walmart that sells great value? Great Value Organic Parsley Flakes. Oh, Organics Herbs de Provence Organic. Oh, Organics Parsley Organic. Isn't that a little bit repetition? Repetitious and Full Circle Parsley Organic. Full Circle Parsley. Alright. The Best Buy date information can be found on the square bottom of the glass bottle. No other Best Buy dates are being recalled. You can view more information about the recalled products here. Alright, and you can click on this link and get more information. But I'm going to end it at that. Again, if you, if you think you have one, you want to check out more information, you go to www.silive, silive, clive, I don't know how they say it, dot com, and type in News twenty or just put in just put in the title spices comma herbs recalled for possible salmonella contamination. Okay, with that I'm going to end this one and say good night to everybody. I love you all and thank you for your prayers. Um, I just. I plead the blood of Jesus over each and every one of you. I, I know I've told you before, but I got a lot of new subscribers. And every single night, I plead the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth over all of my spiritual family, which is my subscribers and all the saints, because we're supposed to pray for all the saints. All right. As well as my relatives. I do them too. I plead the blood over over you, your families, your pets, any other animals you're raising, your homes inside and out, every square inch, all your electronics, and your mirrors. Did you know that mirrors can somehow, I don't understand it, but I know I lived with a woman whose daughter was my daughter's best friend and she needed a place to live. I let her live with me. And she covered her mirror up every night because her ex-husband was a Satanist. So he knew stuff. And he told her, the demons can come through the mirrors. If you have an open door in your life, you can have 
de that's how demons can come in. So I plead the blood of Jesus over all your mirrors every night. And you should too, really. Everybody should do their own, but I do it for those who don't know and pray that my prayer works for you. And now you know, okay? The, the, the devil and his demons hate the name of Jesus, the word, spoken word, and the blood of Jesus. The name, the word, and the blood. Anyway, I think that's right. So I plead the blood of Jesus, and I put hedges of protection around your property with warrior angels and a wall from, of, uh, from heaven of the Holy Spirit fire. But I think everybody should do it for themselves too. There's so much attacking going on right now. So, all these recalls, all people putting salmonella, I think people are putting salmonella in these products. And people who are not grounded in the word and don't know to pray over all your food will will possibly be sickened by some of these things. So always pray over your food and drinks. Whatever it is, I've started praying over my coffee in the morning. Because with all these recalls going on, first of all, somewhere out west, they were reporting some illness that gives you boils, that's a plague in their water supply. So, I don't know, I haven't heard any updates on it. If any of you have heard anything about it, send it to my email at genieartisty <clears throat> at gmail.com and I'll put up a report on that. So we'll know if it's going further than far out west. Okay? All right. With, um, with that, I'm going to say good night. God bless you. Or maybe good morning for some of you. Whenever you see this. And I'm going to say I'm out.